The Mental Health is a Lifestyle podcast is not a substitute for your relationship with a mental health professional. Hey, 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 family, and welcome back to another episode of The Mental Health is a Lifestyle podcast with your girl, Andrea Wise Brown. So this week, family, um, oh, I have to say this for anybody who's just scrolling by, um, if you are not a part of the family, we want you to be a part of the family. So please click this uh, subscribe button and subscribe to the podcast and click that little bell so that you get notifications every time a new episode is up. Okay, so taking care of business first. Now, let me let me tell you, let me tell you the story, family. Let me bring you in. So, you know, um, this week was supposed to be uh, the part two to um, Love is Blind UK. My best friend and I were going to kind of follow up and do Love is Blind UK. Um, and we are still going to do that because they are, they at the finale. So we know who ended up with who, who got married and then who didn't, who like left their bride or groom at the altar. So we know all of that. And I don't know if you guys have watched that show. It's pretty interesting. As I've said before, it's not a show that I would normally watch, but my best friend, she kind of reeled me into watching it. Ayana and my best friend they reeled me into watching it and so it's pretty interesting and it's fun um to talk about relationships um different people's insecurities and characteristics in creating bonds in relationships and you know that all falls under mental health as a lifestyle that falls under our umbrella because we do everything here mental health All right. Yeah, because I want you to stop by here and I want you to learn. I want you to be inspired. I want you to be empowered. That's what I and I want you to have fun. That that's the goal of this uh, podcast. But the reason why part two, we didn't put part two up this week is because we didn't get a chance to record part two because my bestie is sick. But she's she's recuperating. She's recuperating. And so um, as I come on, you know, came here today, I'm like, okay, you got a commitment, sis. This is what I'm saying to myself. Right. So if y'all ever have commitments in life and um, you want to be consistent and stay true to your commitments, that is what I do. That is a value of mine. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to come on today. But what am I going to talk about? Because I don't really have. you know, someone else to interview or someone else to kind of talk with. And so um, what's so interesting is, yeah, I need to talk to y'all about what's actually going on in my life right now. Craziest thing, craziest thing. So um, I'm going to ask you, family, have you ever been in a situation in life, right, on this journey called life? where you may have these plans in your head as to how you want to achieve this goal or how you want to achieve this dream or how you may want this um this job to play out or move into a certain place to play out or a relationship to play out and then all of a sudden boom something comes in a wrench just comes in and knocks your whole program off its kilter, knocks it out of whack. And then you stuck there thinking, well, oh my gosh, what is going on? And what happened? (laughs) Because, you know, this was like well planned out. And for me, I don't know about you guys, but I do find a false sense of control in having plans, you know? So when I you know, have a plan. If I'm traveling to a foreign country, which I love to do, I always like to have a general plan. I don't plan every single day and what I'm going to do, but I at least plan, you know, of course you got to plan your flights. I plan where I'm going to stay. That's very important to me. Um, and what's kind of like around where I want to stay. And then I think about the the um, most important things or goals that I want to reach or do while I'm there, you know, abroad. And so I kind of have a sense or an outline. There we go. So it doesn't have to be a specific plan as to what it is that I want to do. 
And then in my head, it's not a rigid plan, but that for me, once I check those boxes, I have accomplished my goal of maybe traveling to this foreign place. Okay. And so that usually happens. Well, the same thing in life, right? Let's just say, as I've taught y'all before about me, you know, when um, I came up with, you know, this this passion, um, well, really, it was to take care of myself when I left home at 18. And I realized that I had a gift and I thought, okay, I'm going to do hair as a cosmetologist. And as I do that, all right, all right, and I'm starting to work for people. I realized, no, Andrea, you's a boss chick. You got to work for yourself. When I did that, then I started to put together an outline. Didn't have to happen specifically in any order, but it was an outline of what it was that I wanted to do. Same thing like becoming a therapist, right? Like I go to school, I do all these things. I have an outline of what it is. Don't know how and when it's going to come into place. I'm not really rigid with the plans. I had a baby. I was newly married, had a house and was still running the salon, but I knew what I wanted to do. I had the goals and, you know, it had me an outline and I was on my way to doing it. And yes, there's some bumps, you know, that come along that hit you in the road, but don't really throw me off too much. I offer my plan. So now at this point in my life, I had some plans. I got some new plans that I'm working on. And um, I'm also kind of going through being totally honest. I'm going through some tough times, um, you know, with some with some new choices that I'm making in life. And so um and the part of my outline was for me, as y'all can see, if you're looking on YouTube, I am in a different place than I'm usually in. So I am sitting in the backyard. This is my childhood home and I'm sitting in the backyard. All right, Andre, how did you get here? Well, two weeks ago, I traveled to New York. Um, I met with my friend Susie. We hung out. We went to a Broadway play. We was living La Vida Loca. Everything was amazing. And then all of a sudden, I broke my foot. <laughs> I broke my foot. And listen, I have never, ever, ever been on crutches a day in my life. Okay? Like never. Never been on crutches. I'm like literally in a boot now. Um, I'm pretty, you know, I'm dependent on others. I am a very independent woman and um <laughs> and I like to do things on my own. Um and you know if I need somebody, if I need you, I'm going to reach out to you and tell you that I need you. But it takes me a while to get to a place to where I feel like I really need you. But if I need you, I'm going to reach out to you. But most things, you know, with God's help, I kind of feel like, ooh, this was the, this was I was telling myself that I was accomplishing them on my own. So, anywho, I fall, I break my foot, which is a total freak accident, total freak accident, because who breaks their foot? But this is what's come up for me, family, and that I really want to share with you because, you know, I practice what I teach. So, after breaking my foot, and I won't give you the details of that, one day, you know, maybe I will. Um, it's really interesting if Susie and I were to do a podcast together and we could tell you like how the thing played out and all of the um, moments of enlightenment that we gained from it. It was so chaotic. But if I swear, if somebody had a, a camera following us, it would have been like reality TV gold. OK, but anywho, um, as I've broken my foot. And now I'm here. So I was in New York City. Now I'm here in New Jersey. Because now, guess what? I cannot do things for myself, which is a limiting belief. And it's a story that I've told myself. Because the truth is that I can do things for myself. Just not all of the things that I've done before. But let me just tell y'all that when this first happened to me, that was the first thing that I thought. So I want to point out these things, you know, the moments that our plans go awry, you know, we're on our way to accomplishing whatever goal that is, and your plans go to the left, and then you start to feel like you have no control about how to move forward. Sometimes it can be debilitating, and it really can send you into a spiral of depression. But I am here to tell you 
some techniques. I'm here to give you some techniques and tell you that you don't have to spiral into depression. To also tell you and show you that even mental health professionals, we go through shit too. We go through stuff too. And we have to use the skills. We should use the skills that we teach. So as I said, one of the limiting beliefs that I had was like, because I literally could not lift myself up could not walk like in that moment i was totally dependent on whoever wanted to help me like whoever wanted to help me i was uh dependent on susie i was dependent on like random men who could literally like lift me up i'm not a small girl but you know who could like lift me up to like take me upstairs and lift me up to put me in ubers and just in those moments just even for me to ask for help you know i actually found myself like on the curb after somebody kind of put me someplace with crutches under me like i didn't even know how to work crutches i didn't even know you you lean on them but then you and then i kind of like messed up a muscle under my arm because I think I was putting too much weight because I was trying to control the crutches. There's a girl trying to control the crutches, okay? But anywho, while I'm like standing on the crutches and like, let's just say there's an Uber there and the door is open and, you know, Susie's like, okay, come on, get on. And I'm like, I can't. Like, I literally in my mind, talking about mindset, I don't even know how to put... I, I can't lean on this foot because the foot is broken and it is broken. I had MRI and... um x-rays in but the foot is broken so i can't put any weight on it and then this foot in my head this is my only good foot and i'm holding everything else up on this foot so y'all want me to move forward and then i don't know how these crutches work so it was a freaking mess okay for the first few days i'm two weeks in now but um what i've learned or have been reminded of there you go in these past two weeks is understanding that things will happen in life and they will rock you to your core and they will throw you off your path that you think is success or throw you off your path of trying to figure out your goals because that's that's what life is it's a journey it's a journey of trials so that we learn so we can come through it and triumph right going back to the god in us to that internal God in us. You know, we were all created in his image, but we got to go through some stuff. We got to go through some stuff. Okay. And the stuff that we go through is challenging. It's hard. Okay. So in this process, right, I start off with this belief, like I can't even walk. I'm totally dependent. In the first few days, I was really dependent. I mean, I was up to, there were certain things that I that I, I could do, right? Because, you know, are you, because that's the question you ask yourself, are you totally dependent, Andrea? Well, no, I mean, this person has your right side, but you do have a crutch under your left side. I say, okay, let's challenge that thought. You're not totally dependent. You still do have some independence, you know? Um, Andrea, can you wash yourself? Because I was scared. I'm like, I can't get in the shower. I can't get in the tub. I put, you know, and it's like, okay, I can't even. And this was one of those limiting beliefs. Oh, what am I going to do? I can't even wash my lies because I could wash myself. It just wasn't in the way that I had done before. So I still did have some independence. You know, I had to kind of figure out how to get into the bathroom and then to find my position there and to get all my hot water and my soaps and everything together. And it may have taken me double the time that it usually would to get into the shower <laughs> or triple the time, but I still could do it. And I could still wash my face and I could still brush my teeth. But the fear initially, the limiting belief when you get rocked off your path of what you know for sure with me standing on two sturdy feet was I'm totally dependent. Uh, so yeah, that was a limiting belief and it was a lie because no, I can wash myself. Yeah, I can. Yes. And as of today, I actually wash myself even better than I've been washing myself because I actually was able to get in the shower. I figured out a way to make it work and it worked. Okay. So limiting beliefs, um, 
that can hold us down if we continue to believe them. You know, what you think you create. So I know that when this first happened, because it rocked me at my core, you know, I was holding on to these beliefs because of fear. If I didn't hold on to them long. And that's the good thing is because, you know, I do have supportive people around me who are also on their path of learning and growing, you know, and, um, you know, um, well, one of them would be my therapist. So I've still made sure that even though I'm here, thank God for uh, virtual sessions, I was still able to see my therapist. And when I talked to my therapist, you know, that was one of the things that he reminded me of. And I'm like, oh, yeah, you're right. You know, it's the thing that I tell y'all. Do you know that to be 100% true? No, I don't. Oh, I'm lying to myself. I do still have some independence. It's not the same as it was before, but I do. And so it's shifting the mind that takes away that that feeling for desperation that's brought on by fear. And once you shift the mind, then you find hope and you find strength and you find resilience. And uh, yeah, you find a way, a belief that you're going to get through this because I'm going to get through this because I know that I ain't the first person that's broken their foot and I'm not the last person who's broken their foot. I just feel like right now at this time in my life, you know what I'm saying? I done talked to the Lord. I said, look, this time in my life, it wasn't really time to do all this. Like, you know, Lord, I didn't really want this lesson right now. But for some reason, I do believe everything happens the way it's supposed to. He needed me to sit down. Hey, family, come on over here because I have something for you. Starting off with a go-to guide for keeping your mind healthy and strong. This right here is the Bible to mental health. It's your mental health Bible. The name of it is Six Pillars to Power Up Your Mind and Make Mental Health a Lifestyle. Hmm. Everything that you need to know about keeping your minds healthy and strong is in this go-to guide. Where you get it from? Well, you get it from awisebrown.com backslash shop. But in this go-to guide, honey, in this mental health Bible, you know what you're going to find out? You're going to find out the benefits of aromatherapy oh, and how it can shift your mood. But guess what? You don't have to go anyplace else to look for your aromatherapy because your girl's got you. Okay? You can get some aromatherapy here. This is aromatherapy is in this candle. This is called a slice of happiness. It makes me tingle, like literally makes me tingle. A slice of happiness. This is a cruelty-free candle with no parabens, no formaldehyde, and no known suspected carcinogenics. Now, you know, you go out here and you find these candles that smell good, but are they good for you? Are they good for your brain? Come on now, get real with yourself. Well, this one smells delicious. And it's good for you. Made with essential oils. It's a soy candle. Amazing. Uh, you can burn it or you can just walk by and smell it. Lord have mercy. It's so good. Okay, so that's your, your candle, your aromatherapy, which raises the dopamine in your brain. That's your natural feel good. No transmitters in your brain. All right, y'all. And, oh, I'm a part of you. You're a part of me. We are a family. We got hoodies now, and these are unisex hoodies, and they wear well, they wash well, and they feel so good. So you can wear them over your clothes, you know what I'm saying, and look dope, or you can wear them as your clothes with nothing under them, which I like to do often. And when you travel everywhere, I mean, every time I wear them, I'm moving around, people are always asking me whether I'm traveling, going to the supermarket, what's that, who's that? And I'm like, mental health is a lifestyle, because see, this is on the back. Okay, they come in white and they come in black. I'm like, join the family. Mental health is a lifestyle podcast. So there you go. Family, don't you ever say that I ain't give you nothing. You get all of these things from awisebrown.com backslash shop. All right. I got your goods. I got you. Don't have to go anyplace else. I'll see you on the other side. 
And he needed me to sit down in New Jersey and not in Texas, which is also interesting. You know, I'm always, like I tell y'all, I'm always asking myself, what is this here to teach me? And so I'm learning. I'm learning. I get an awareness of something like every day. You know, I see a new shift in consciousness. I see a new miracle in this, in this pain every day. In the foot, there's a lot of freaking pain in the foot. But I'm going to be all right. I ain't the first one to break their foot and I ain't the last one. Okay? So there we go. But let me just tell y'all something. If you've ever thrown off your path of, um, of, of your timeline of trying to achieve your goals. I'm just going to give y'all some little nuggets that I'm really learning, you know, as I'm going through this. And you start to feel like it gives you a loss of control. Like you literally have a loss of control. The first thing I want you to do is be aware of your feelings. What am I feeling? And so the first thing that I was feeling was fear, fear, fear. You know, I don't know, um, many of you who know me know that I work out six days a week, six days a week. But this is the thing. I'm not one of those workouters that's like a workout guru and could teach nobody. I can't teach nobody how to work out and all that stuff. I do it to keep my mind right, to keep my mind healthy, to keep me grounded. You know, it puts me in a great space so that when I'm ready to see all my clients for the week, like I am ready for the workout, you know? So I kind of get my mind together first. So I'm ready for the emotional workout so I can do the work that God has me do working with clients every day. Well, guess what, sis? When your foot is broken, that resource, you ain't, you ain't got that. So that was my first thought. My first thought was, oh my God, my, my foot. I work out every day. How am I going to find my peace? How am I going to find my inner peace? Lord have mercy. Like, you know, and, and then I'm, I ain't going to lie, right? Um, because I don't do the workout necessarily for my body. However, I do care about my body. So I look at Susie and I'm like, I can't work out, Susie. Wait, and she's like, okay. I'm like, but all my independence is in my feet. She's like, now you know that is a lie. <laughs> she said, what do you do for a living? Are you a are you a, a marathon runner? I'm like, no, that's not what I do. <laughs> I use my mouth, right? I use my mind, encouragement. Hey, that's what I do for a living. So I'm not totally dependent on my feet, but I know my feet is what grounds me. I walk miles and miles and miles. I do the treadmill. I do squats, all the weights. Everything that I do is dependent on my feet. And so. Um, I was rocked. First, first thing I was very fearful of, oh my God, I'm not going to be able to do that. So fear came up for me. I was scared. What? And then, oh, this is, I, I, let me come back to this point. I also said to her, I'm going to have to drink broth like every day, like seriously broth for breakfast, for lunch and for dinner. And if y'all snacks, like, broth for snacks i can't eat no food if i'm just gonna be off my feet and i'm not gonna be working out how that's gonna work out not for me not for me i ain't this I'm, I'm not a small girl i am a full figure girl but i i appreciate my full figure and i want to stay right here at this size of the full figure mix you know what i'm saying i can't can, i can handle this go up and down the stairs do all my you know so my thing is okay there was another fear that i'm gonna be 18,000 pounds. That was a fear. It was. I'm going to have to drink soup every day. Soup, soup, not even soup. Don't even put the chicken in it. Don't even put the noodles in it. Just broth. Okay. Fear. All right. So that's what came up. I'm fearful. But then after I realized all of those fears, you know, I can't do nothing for myself. I'm dependent. I'm going to be 18,000 pounds. My, the next thing, so is be aware of your fear. The second step would be to challenge your mindset. Does that actually mean that I'm going to be 18,000 pounds? <laughs> uh, yeah. No. No. Man, I might gain, you know, four, five, six, 18,000. So I know I ain't going to eat no bra because I'm pretty green. So I know I ain't going to eat no bra. But let's like look at the reality of the situation. So yes, because I'm used to working out and I'm not going to be moving as such, even walking as such, you know, my, you know, I ain't going to have no calorie deficit around here. So, okay, I may gain 
about five pounds, maybe 10. Okay, that's not 18,000. Okay, Andre, you can let that go. So challenging your mindset, and you know who will help you challenge your mindset is a therapist. A therapist, find you a good therapist. And if you look at one of the old episodes in this podcast, that was the title, How to Find a Good Therapist, I mapped it out for you. Okay, so that's number two. You're going to challenge your mindset set, and you're going to use a therapist. Because sometimes it's difficult for you to do this on your own. So you got to kind of say things out loud, journal them, and then you talk to your therapist and your therapist will challenge you to where you start seeing cracks in this devastating dark space that you've created in your head. And you're like, oh, there's the hope. There's the light. Oh, shoot. That's right. Okay, that's number two. Number three, be grateful. Be grateful for what is. You know, I had to start being grateful. I'm so, I ain't know how to work these crutches, but guess what? I'm grateful for the daggone crutches. I this the boot the boot hurts and my foot is in pain but i'm grateful for the for the boot i'm grateful for the doctors i'm grateful for the x-ray machine i'm grateful for the for the for the mri for the technicians i'm grateful that i have a place to come to i'm grateful for my family who helping me my sister who is there my sister has been there every step of the way i'm talking about unconditional help just unconditional love like here, whatever I need, that for me, ah, oh, was everything. My mom, my auntie, my stepdad, they are all here helping me, asking me, you know, in the moments that my stepdad will come out and we'll see each other walking in the hall with him and he'd be like, how you doing today, Andre Brown? Just in those little moments, just make me so happy. I'm like, I'm good, Pop Pop. He like, that's good. That's it. That's it. Oh my gosh. This was this was a, an amazing moment. Just so many things, you know, that I'm grateful for. But I will tell you, oh, and my mom just wanting to take care of me. And now that I'm here, she gets to take care of me. So she loves that. And I'm grateful for the time that we have together. But, you know, um, when I was, you know, early in this when this first happened and I had to come here and then go to the doctor and my my stepdad. Pop Pop Tom, he was, um, I asked him to take me to the doctor the next day, right? I had to ask for what I need, dependent, can't drive myself. And uh, we got up in the morning, we were going, and I said to him in the car, I said, thank you, Pop Pop. I said, thank you for taking me, you know, to the doctor. And he gets in the car, puts his seatbelt on, and he's helping me in. It could make me cry now, but I'm not. I think I'm all, I might be all cried out, but it does touch my heart still. But we, I get in the car, and as he gets in, I say, thank you, you know, for taking me, because it was over an hour away. And he said, that's what fathers are for. <sighs> Something that I've always wanted. I've always wanted. Yeah, a great relationship with my father. But I have a great relationship with my stepfather, you know, and the fact that he said that, you know, that's that's what fathers are for. That blew me away and it still does. And it touches my heart and I will never forget it. So it's moments like that. If, if my foot was working, I wouldn't have had that moment. And Papa wouldn't have said that to me. So I'm just like. I'm grateful. So many things. Grateful. So be grateful. Okay. So be aware of your feelings. Challenge your mindset with a therapist. Be grateful. Find the things around you to be grateful for. Stay away from people, places, and things that are negative. Negative, 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 negative. You know? somebody calls me hey what you doing whatever I'm like child let me tell you what happened I done broke my you know and the first thing they say is you ain't gonna never be able to wear heels again that's negative why would you say that to me why would you you don't even know that to be true you don't know what God has for me miracles God has for me and how he gonna change this foot so things like that you know let People who have limited beliefs, things that feel negative, when people put their negative thoughts onto you, stay away from that, you know? Even, you know, as I'm like laying in the bed on my days off, because I'm still working, I'm grateful for that, going back to being grateful, and I'm grateful that I get to see my clients every day, because it gets me off of me thinking about my foot, 
and I'm like doing this work, which I love to do. So I'm very grateful for that. But just, you know, laying around with my foot up, ice on the foot, you know, looking at certain things on TV, certain things that come up that's just negative, just negative, that will destroy your soul. Stay away from negative people who speak negative things from negative people. People, places, and things, anything negative, you cling to stuff that's positive while you are in that space of trying to figure out when you feel like you don't have any control. You've been knocked off your rock, okay? And then the last thing is trust God. Woo! That's a bug. I'm sitting outside for everybody on the podcast who's not watching me. It was a bug, and it was buzzing, so I'm thinking I might get bit. But trust God. I'm going to trust God. Let that go. Trust God through this all, through this all, through all of this, trust God. So yes, do I know what my next step is going to be? No. Nope. Do I, I I don't know what this is going to look like. I don't even know when I'm going back to Dallas. I don't even, there's so many things right now (laughs) that I'm in the middle of that I don't know and I don't know the answer to. But let me tell you what this has me doing okay 10 toes down 10 fingers down is remembering to trust who knows it all it is all in his plan trust god and it supersedes all of those things so which is still important be aware of your feelings challenge your mindset with the therapist you know stay away from negative people, places, and things, you know, be grateful for everything that you do have. And more than all of that, trust God. Because everything I know for sure happens for a reason. And even though I don't even know what's going to happen next, what's coming next, who's coming next, where I'm going to be next, when I'm getting on a plane, when I'm going to be able to jump rope again, when I'm going to be able to put on them damn hills again. I don't know, but I'm trusting God. And whatever he says, I'm rolling with. I'm rolling with it. I am rolling with it. And that's what I would say to you, family. That's what I would say to you. So, this is your girl. I told you I was always going to be as honest with you that I can be at every moment that I'm here talking to you. And this is another honest moment with your girl, Andre Wise Brown. And the podcast today is really about when you feel like you've lost control because, you know, your your life took, took a, a left turn instead of a right because your plan was to take the right turn. Then here's some things to do to keep your mind healthy and strong. Because I'm going to practice them every single day. This is the real deal is, you know, sometimes we think we be in control, you know. Before this thing, you know, I thought I was in control. I thought I had more control than I had, okay. And God had to step in and say, little sis. I know we have a good relationship, my daughter. You know what I'm saying? I I know that you love me. I know, I know, I know. I know you give all praises to me. But little sis, as we said to me, little daughter, I think you've been thinking that you controlling more. You've been controlling more. You think you've had more control than you actually have. So let me just show you how to lean totally on me. Totally on me. Well, you ain't got no out. You, You can't even figure it out. And you have to rely totally on me. And hey, I say, hey, I'm there for it. Sunshine state of mind. I'm there for it. Trust God. All right, family. So that is it for today. That is another episode of the Mental Health is a Lifestyle podcast with your girl, Andrea Wise Brown, and I can't wait, can't wait to see you again next week for the next episode. I love you. Be good to you.